So Kim, what's on your radar? Well, a decorated U.S. Marine Corps officer has been relieved of command, forced to undergo a mental health check, and is being threatened with a court-martial after posting a video demanding accountability from senior leadership over the withdrawal in Afghanistan. Last Thursday, after 13 service members and over 100 civilians were killed following an attack at the Kabul airport, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller posted a video on Facebook sharing his grief and frustration. In the video, he called on military leadership to take accountability for the strategic decision to abandon Bagram Air Base and leave Afghanistan without evacuating civilians first. Here's a clip from that video. So in the current fallout of Afghanistan, a lot of Marines were posting on social media, and in response to that, the Commandant published a letter, which is the service chief of the Marine Corps, and I want to read from it. It was dated 18 August, so only a week ago. The Commandant, sir, you wrote, some of you may be struggling with a simple question, was it all worth it? But we want you to know that your service is meaningful, powerful, and important. You fought for the Marine to your left and the Marine to your right. You never let them down. And then you go on to say that, you know, if we're, we're struggling, we should, we should seek counseling, which... You know, I get it. People have killed people. Um, I've killed people, and I and I seek counseling, um, and that's fine. There's a time and place for that. But the reason people are so upset on social media right now is not because the Marine on the battlefield let someone down. That service member has always rose to the occasion and done extraordinary things. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down, and none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying, we messed this up. If an 05 battalion commander has uh, the simplest live fire incident EO complaint, boom, fired. But we have a secretary of defense that testified to Congress in May that the Afghan National Security Force could withstand the Taliban advance. We have chairmen of Joint Chief, who the commandant is a member of that, who's supposed to advise on military policy. We have a Marine combatant commander. All of these people are supposed to advise. And I'm not saying we've got to be in, the, in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying... Did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? Did anyone do that? And when you didn't think to do that, did anyone raise their hand and say, we completely messed this up? I've got battalion commander friends right now that are posting similar things, and they're saying, you know, wondering if it, all the lives were lost and, and if it was in vain, all those, all those people that we've lost over the last you know, 20 years. And he goes on to say that we're all part of a chain. While every link may not be tested, the strength of the chain is only as strong as each link, and you got to be, you know, good link, something like that. And what I'll say is, and from my position, potentially all those people did die in vain if we don't have senior leaders that own up and and raise their hand and say we did not do this well in the end. Without that, we just keep repeating the same mistakes, this amalgamation of the economic slash corporate slash political slash higher military ranks are not holding up their end of the bargain. I want to say this very strongly. I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. Now, after the video went viral overnight, Scheller posted on Facebook the next day that he had been relieved of command, stating, quote, I've been relieved for cause based on a lack of trust and confidence as of 1430 today. My chain of command is doing exactly what I would do if I were in their shoes. A few hours later, Stuart Scheller posted again on his Facebook, this time saying he was receiving multiple messages from fellow Marines begging for him to remove the video out of fear leaving it up would come at huge personal cost. Scheller said he had time to think about it and went on to say, quote, we can't all be wrong. If you all agree, then step up. They only have the power because we allow it. What if we all demanded accountability, unquote? And then citing Thomas Jefferson stating, every generation needs a revolution. Now, two days later, another video appeared, this time titled Your Move, where the lieutenant colonel retired his commission from the Marines after 17 years of service and forfeited his retirement, which he was only three years away from. After 17 years, I'm currently not pending legal action. And I could stay in the Marine Corps for another three years, but I don't think that's the path I'm on. I'm resigning my commission 
as a United States Marine, effective now. I'm sure there's some MAR admin on how I'm supposed to do that, and I'll work through that. But I am forfeiting my retirement on entitlements. I don't want a single dollar. I don't want any money from the VA. I don't want any VA benefits. I'm sure I'm entitled to 100%. I, you know, breathed on the smell and smoke of burning shit for years. I don't want any of it. You know, I asked, all I asked for was accountability of my senior leaders when there are clear, obvious mistakes that were made. I'm not saying we can take back what has been done. All I asked for was accountability for people to comment on what I said and to say, yes, mistakes were made. And had they done that, I would have gone back into rank and file, submitted and accomplished what I wanted. The morning after I posted my video and I came into work, my boss came in and he asked me, what were you trying to accomplish? And that was a very tough question for me. And my response was, I want senior leaders to accept accountability. I think them accepting accountability would do more for service members and PTSD and struggling with purpose than any other transparent piece of paper or message. And I haven't received that. For the over $2 million that I would potentially receive in retirement for the rest of my life, for the however much extra the disability would be, I think that money should go back to all the senior general officers because I think they need it more than I do. Because when I am done with what I'm about to do, you all are going to need the jobs and the security. So what is he about to do? Well, he alludes to wanting to burn the system down. Now, this set off alarm bells. The next day when Stewart went into work, he was ordered by his commanding officer to undergo a mental health screening. In his Facebook post, Scheller stated, quote, excusing the actions of service members because of PTSD does more damage to service members than any trauma in combat. Accountability from senior leaders would alleviate feelings of guilt or shame in service members more than individual counseling. It would save thousands of lives, unquote. Yesterday, Stuart Scheller made a post claiming General David Berger is looking into court-martialing him. Quote, General Berger, sir, I understand you want to court-martial me. Your entire staff has already told me. All the captains you spoke to already text me. You recently banned all unit social media pages so that you could centralize the message because I'm assuming you think Marine leaders aren't capable of passing a message in line with your intent. Your problem right now is that I'm moving faster than you. I'm outmaneuvering you. Now, I admit he sounds on edge, but why wouldn't he? During his entire 17-year military career, we've been a nation at war in Afghanistan. Suddenly, in a matter of days, the war is over and the Taliban are stronger than they were when he started. He feels lied to, he's lost friends, and he's questioning what it was really all for. Now, Scheller is a heavily decorated Marine officer, having been awarded over 30 awards and decorations, including three meritorious service medals and a Bronze Star. The Marine Corps Times spoke to two different Marines who served with Scheller, the first saying, quote, he's always been an infantry officer, meaning there's a 100 percent guarantee that he has seen Marines get blown to pieces for absolutely no reason, while the top brass advance their careers with impunity despite their many failures. The second Marine said, quote, Stuart Scheller was my commanding officer during my last deployment. He was the kind of officer who always puts his Marines first. Naturally, we knew there was no way he was ever going to make general with that kind of selfless leadership style. And that's exactly what Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is doing now. He's putting his Marines first. He knows, as he stated over and over, that the men and women he served with are battling tough emotions. These service members are realizing they were asked to sacrifice their lives, not for freedom or democracy, but for companies and individuals to make money. That people were either hiding the truth or were unwilling to face the fact that the Afghan forces and the puppet government had no will to fight and were riddled in corruption. That the withdrawal of our military personnel first while leaving civilians behind was a mistake that was made because the administration, top brass and state and intel didn't want to admit the lie that they had been propping up for the past two decades. And now Scheller is fighting a new battle. He's waging war on the narratives, the status quo. He's fighting on behalf of his Marines who have lost morale and are suffering mentally because of it. He wants someone to step up and say, it wasn't your fault. It was mine. 
And his attitude is one we should all be adopting. We should all be demanding accountability for these endless, wasteful, useless, failed wars. Now he's putting everything he has on the line, his job, his retirement. And I'm sure this is causing some pain in his family and strain amongst his friends. He's risking it all. Yet here we are. The average American so used to war that it rarely ever makes the news. The failures get glossed over. The lives lost are forgotten. And we watch in horror for a moment or two when there's nothing bigger going on. And then we just go straight back to eating our bagels and drinking our coffee. And because of this apathy that has become the norm in America, nothing fundamentally changes. We are so far removed from the wars we wage that the reports of the carnage from suicide bombs or entire families filled with children being droned leaves us shaking our head, then moving on with our lives like this is normal, because sadly it is. And the brass keep getting promoted. Politicians keep funneling the money. And when the war ends, we move on to the next one, which I'm sure we will. Next will most likely be proxy wars with China. So my question is, will Stewart's quest for accountability be all in vain? Will attitudes shift? Will America say no to the profitable military machine President Eisenhower warned us of? Will we finally step up when politicians try to frighten us into the next battle? Or will we, will we continue this endless cycle of endless wars? So, Lisa, I want to ask you, do you think that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's quest, him kind of throwing it all away, is going to be all in vain? Or will this actually send some sort of ripple up the ranks? Well, I'm, I'm grateful for his powerful voice and Kim for your reporting on this, but I, I, I'm skeptical that there's going to be any accountability. And I, I just want to know, you know, I was flipping through the cable news this morning to kind of get a sense how after the official withdrawal, Afghanistan's being covered in the last 20 years of a debacle and disastrous war. And it's more or less disappeared from the headlines. CNN did a brief segment basically saying, you know, Biden was right and it was a good speech. But mark my words, we are going to just see it disappear from headlines. There are not going to be conversations about the last 20 years. I was very, I, I, I've advocated for specifically talking about the withdrawal itself, because at least that permeates the hearts and minds of Americans and I think can put it at the forefront of discussion. It could call for congressional hearings. And then we could get into the broader discussion. I worry we're not even going to talk about that. I think that the, the, the media is going to move on as quickly as they did on, you know, the Pentagon Papers back in 2019. And we're going to we're going to leave, you know, tens of thousands of Afghan war veterans who feel confused, lost, betrayed, lied to asking these same questions with no answers and no accountability. Yeah. Ryan, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, to, to me, first of all, there's a fundamental moral inconsistency in what he's saying that I don't think we should gloss over. And that, and that is this. He says in his video that he does think that the war ought to be ending. But he doesn't like the way that the leadership uh, carried it out, Bagram, this, this and that. Where was he over the last 17 years when he, if he thought that this war should be ending? So all of a sudden now, he feels like he's compelled well, to break ranks and go forward. Se se secondly, and we, we could, yeah. could talk about that, but se secondly, the idea of a lieutenant colonel in uniform talking publicly, attacking his civilian defense secretary or trying to organize a revolution, uh, saying that he's outmaneuvering uh, the top ranks, telling them that he has things planned for them that's going to be a problem for them. I don't think people necessarily understand the gift that we've had in this, this country to have civilian control over the military. You know, is the, you live, is the live defense a country, secretary a civilian? I mean, <laughs> well, he, he is, <laughs> well, yes, can give yes, him a waiver yes, so we call him a civilian. Yes, he's a civilian. Yeah, he, yes, he's, he's not a civilian. He's, he, he is a civilian. The president's I mean, maybe a civilian. Technically. Yes, he should not have been given a waiver. And I think the Democrats, uh, you know, uh, should, not have, should not have allowed him to get uh, a waiver because he hadn't. You're, in order to serve, what is it? You have to be seven years we out of the military. We gave Mattis a waiver. Yeah. We gave, yeah. Mattis got a waiver. He got right. a waiver. He is and a civilian. He's, so he's not just, and he, so he's criticizing his civilian leadership. Uh, he's also criticizing all, publicly criticizing all of those above him. He's trying to organize people to say, join with me and challenge you know, your senior leadership. He's doing this in, in uniform. This, this, this could, we could look back on this several years from now and say this was, this was the break. Like this was the moment that civilian control 
of, of government, a democratic civilian control of government was, was broken. And Scheller, okay, yes, he's, he's clearly he's taking, taking a risk. I, and I think the hammer should come down on him so that uh, you know, these types of uh, mutinies from the military do not become part of our politics. But he also clearly has political ambitions. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Republicans are drafting him by the end of today to run for Congress or Senate. But I too, more quick. people in the military should be speaking well, up then, like him. Then you're going to get a military coup. You'll you'll have that within six months. You, and, you and know talk what? To I, people, we need, like, we no. need military to but be just, saying just no to, be to this clear. military That's outrageous. That is, that is outrageous. No, we we absolutely do We're not need the military war. saying anything We're publicly in our politics. We're not going to go to war for wasteful corporations to make a bunch of money. They've got to step forward You will regret that unless you want a military dictatorship. I, well, I, I, I agree keeping politics out of the military is crucial, but I would say this. This lieutenant colonel, lieutenant colonel, spoke out and the next day was fired. If he had any time in the last 17 years, the same thing would have happened. He and his rank and file are absolutely powerless to speak out against generals and to challenge yeah. the policymaking. That was the one point I wanted yeah. to make. Yeah, he did he, bring yeah. up that another one of his comrades had actually spoken up a few years ago and had the same fate as him, and it didn't make the news at that time. I mean, this is now an opportunity to make the news in doing this. And I do think that military members need to step up and say, I'm not going to die for your wasteful, crappy wars we, anymore. It's it's the politicians and the elected civilian officials that we need to take on. This was Joe Biden's decision. This was the National Security Advisor's decision. The, 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 the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff doesn't make policy. He's an advisor. There's plenty to look into of, you know, why he didn't warn sooner, why he was wrong in, you know, congressional testimony. But ultimately, the buck stops with the civilian leadership. And I think that that is where Stewart needs to be directing his ang anger. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we, we just can't. We just cannot have figures from the military urging urging revolution and organizing rallies, and and trying to uh, you know overthrow their leadership. That 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 only leads one direction, and it's a very dark place. We need congressional well, accountability. If you like the leadership, I suppose. Right. right? Yeah. So, so yes, obviously, every country, when, when they do have a military coup, you know, has massive parts of the population that support it. I, I see where you would be if this happened. I don't. That I, doesn't I, mean I don't it's think a he's calling thing. for a coup. I mean, he's just saying we want accountability, and I don't think that there's anything wrong in in anybody stepping forward and saying I'm not willing to do this anymore. And people are losing their morale, and these guys come back with PTSD, and they're depressed, and they don't have the World War II vets. You know, those guys got to come back and say, I fought against the Nazis. The Vietnam vets didn't get to say that. These guys aren't going to be able to say that. They go on and they're, and they're depressed and somebody's got to step up for them. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think he's calling for a coup. I, I don't know if we need to go well, that he did far. Say, maybe he, he did is. say a revolution, maybe. but we'll, we'll, well, have to, right. maybe, maybe. we'll have to leave yeah. it. We'll have to okay. leave it there. Alyssa, looking, looking forward to what's on your radar next.